Yeah, and we also run into uh, uh, boiler systems quite a bit uh, where they, they heat water and then send them through pipes um, throughout your house. Hey folks, Cameron Stewart here, EXP Realty out of Rome, New York, serving you right here in the Mohawk Valley. I'm joined again today uh, with Nathan Durant from Durant Home Inspections out of Verona. We're doing our eighth episode today, trying to get as much information as we can from an industry professional, from someone who's doing it right here, a licensed home inspector in the Mohawk Valley. Today we're talking about heating and cooling systems, what a uh, home inspector is looking for when doing that. I actually skipped a little introduction. So, so Nate, how are you doing today? Doing well. Thank you, Cameron. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So heating and cooling systems, these are pretty expensive uh, most of the time, depending on what system you have. And uh, here in upstate New York in the Mohawk Valley, we need an efficient way and we need to make sure that our uh, furnace is working correctly. All right. So let's break down some of the different types of heating sources and furnaces you come across, um, what you do for each one when you're looking for it and, and what we should know during an inspection for our heating source. Sure, sure. Um, so when we uh, go to inspect a furnace, uh, the only way we can operate them is by normal operating controls, according to New York State. So we just, we use the thermostat. We cannot flip on any switches, turn on any valves, if the gas is shut off to it, uh, anything along those lines. So we can only use the thermostat. If it doesn't turn on with the thermostat, you know, we just have to disclose that the furnace was not operating on the day of inspection. So they're pretty strict about that. So we just use the thermostat. So we'd go in, we'd turn the thermostat either up or down, uh, depending if we're testing AC or heat, turn it up for the heat. Uh, we'll pull any cover off we can um, without any screwdrivers or anything, any pullover covers. And if we can, we can see the burn chamber and watch uh, it ignite and, and see how it's burning. Uh, you can tell by the color of the flame if the if the flame is 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 not blue. It should be a pretty good blue color. And if it's, we want to make sure it's not flickering at all. Uh, that if it's flickering a lot, that can sometimes show the heat exchanger could be cracked um, and allowing air could be blowing on the flame and allowing a flickering. Um, so that's kind of some of the, the major things we look for. We also look for the condition, make sure there's no um, rust or anything in the furnace at all like that. And we also look at the, um, the exhaust pipe, whether they're plastic or metal. On the high efficiency furnaces, they're plastic now because the furnace um, extracts the heat from the air so much the exhaust is cool enough where we can run it through PVC. So if you have a P PVC flu, that's why you have a high efficiency furnace. Now, what you referenced there is mainly for forced air furnaces, is that correct? Yes, uh, uh, yes, forced air, yeah. Yeah, and we also run into uh, uh, boiler systems quite a bit uh, where they, they heat water and then send them through pipes um, throughout your house. And, and heat heat your house that way, usually by uh, baseboard radiators to give off the heat. Those are a little tougher to, to inspect or no? Um, about the same process. Usually we can't see the burn chamber on a boiler. Um, so it's a little, we just pretty much examine the outside, examine all the pipes, make sure there's no leaks. Um, so that's all we do for a boiler. Got it, got it. Now, when it comes to uh, air conditioning systems and cooling systems, uh, you know, not everyone obviously has an air conditioning system uh, here in our state of New York, but there, there, there are plenty of people who do. Um, what are you looking for from an inspection standpoint with that air conditioning and cooling unit? Sure. Um, so an AC unit, we would look out, usually um, they're set outside um, and we, we watch them operate if we can. Uh, the thing is, you're not supposed to run them if it's been below 65 degrees in the last 24 hours um, because they have an oil in them. And if it hasn't been above 65 degrees, the oil is too thick and will not lubricate what it needs to. So we don't want to damage the system. It's not ours. Um, so we don't want to run it in that case. So we'd only run the AC unit, units uh, pretty much July and August. And besides that, because of lovely New York, um, we can't run them unless they're already on, of course. I had one today that was already on, so 
I, I got to operate, but basically we just listen to it, uh, make sure it sounds okay. We'll look at the condition again. You wanna make sure uh, none of the fins are bent. If you look close at your AC unit, there's a lot of fins, allows the air to blow through easily. Um, and we wanna make sure it's clean. A lot of leaves get stuck in there. Um, so we look for that. And uh, we look at insulation on the lines going into the house as well. Now, let's wrap up with a tip for our viewers on how to winterize their, their uh, cooling unit, their AC unit. Sure. Um, so a big mistake actually made when winterizing your AC unit, a lot of people wrap them in tar tarps real tightly um, and think they're, they're, they're doing good, which it's probably better than just leaving it exposed. But the manufacturer actually recommends you just cover the top. Uh, because when you wrap it with a tarp, mice and stuff will get in there for the winter. And next thing you know, you got a mess, chewed wires and, and mouse nest everywhere. So what they actually recommend is making just a frame out of plywood and two by fours or whatever you got, just to set over the top to protect the snow um, from, from getting on it in the weather. Um, so that's all you really need to do instead of wrapping them up like most people. Cover the top, but not the sides. That's right. Yep, exactly. Easy, easy enough. And that's important yep. you know, around here because people who do have uh, their air conditioning units, you know, it, we're going to get snow. It's going to get, it's mm. going to get nasty in the winter time. So we want to make sure we're taking care of them. Um, so appreciate that. That was a little bit about uh, heating and cooling systems and what's a home inspector here in the Mohawk Valley is looking for. Thank you so much, Nathan. If someone's looking to get in contact with you, how do they do so? Oh, absolutely. They can uh, call or text me at 315-263-3693. They can email me at Nathan at DurantHomeInspections.com. And they can also contact us through our website, DurantHomeInspections.com. Awesome. And if you're looking for a home or you're looking to sell your home in the Mohawk Valley here in the Utica Rome area, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, 315-351-2765 or log on to www.homesbycameron.com. Nathan, thank you so much for uh, spending time with us today. And folks, we hope to speak with you soon.